Hi there folks, are you manually extracting data from your files in SharePoint? Maybe there's an easier way using Power Automate and AI Builder. Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in today's demonstration. As we can see from the process diagram, this automation will be triggered when a file is uploaded to a SharePoint site. Because the file is likely to be a Word document, we'll need to convert it into a PDF. Then we can use OCR and AI Builder to extract all the text and then supply that text to the summarize text action, also in AI Builder, before saving that summary back to our SharePoint site. Over in Power Automate, I have a flow that I've built previously that will do exactly those steps, as we can see on screen. And I'm gonna talk you through how to build this step by step. If I load up Word, I have a sample file that I'm going to upload. It's a sample contract for the purchase of a new house. And I would like to create a summary of this file as it's uploaded to SharePoint. Over on SharePoint, if I drag and drop my file, whilst we can see that initially I don't have a summary for that document on my SharePoint site, the flow will soon be triggered and within about 10 to 15 seconds, the flow will complete. And if I jump back across onto SharePoint, we can see that there is now a summary about this particular file, a contract for a new house between John Doe and Jane Smith. Now this particular summary is based on a system prompt that generates a summary we can actually further develop this to suit our own requirements with our own prompt using AI Builder. And I'll demonstrate that later in the video. So to kick off this flow from scratch, I'm gonna start with a manual trigger and I'm gonna add in an input for a file and that'll allow us to upload a file into this flow as it's triggered but I'll later on convert it so that it triggers when a file is uploaded. The next step is to create a, a version of that file. Now this doesn't sound very intuitive, but we need to convert the file type into PDF. Now I'm going to use the OneDrive capability for converting to PDF, which means I must save the file to OneDrive first before converting it to PDF. There is an alternative using the Graph API. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but if there is interest in the comments, I'll maybe produce that in a later video. So here I'm going to choose a temporary path. I have a conveniently named temp folder and that'll do for now. I need to include a file name. We can get that dynamically using the dynamic content from the uploaded file. Here we have the file content name and then the file content is based on, again, dynamic content. We have the content bytes. So here we've taken the file from the trigger, created a file, and now we need to go and add an action to convert that file into PDF. And you can see here we have the convert file action. So this needs a file identifier, again, using dynamic content, we can get that unique identifier from the create file action, and then the desired output is a PDF. Now to keep things tidy, I'm then gonna delete the original file that I've created. So I'm going to add in a delete file action, again from OneDrive. If we look at the dynamic value for the file, I want to get the identifier, and it's all based on that initial create file. So here we have created a version of the file that we've attached to the flow, we've converted it to PDF, and then we've deleted that original file, leaving no remnants of that original attached document file. So if I was to go in to add another action, choose AI Builder, and if I was to choose Create Text with GPT using a prompt, we can see within the prompts, we have a series of AI prefix prompts. These are system prompts. I'm gonna go with a summarize, and I will build a custom prompt later on, but the input text is exactly that. It needs to be text, and at this point, we have the file content of a PDF. And if I go into the dynamic content and have a look at the convert file, we have the content of a file. This is not plain text, it's base64. So if you pass this into the create text with GPT using a prompt, it will fail because it will not recognize the content of that file. So we need to insert a step prior to that, add an action, Again, AI Builder, and if we scroll to the bottom, there is recognized text in an image or a PDF. Now, because I've converted that file into a PDF, I can then pass in the base64 into this action, so file content from the convert file, and the output of that action is indeed text. So back into the create text, in the input text, into the dynamic content, we can then insert the full text of the document and the output of this action will be the text summary. So just to wrap up the basics of this flow, I'm going to add in a compose action. 
If you watched my video a couple of weeks back on variables, you'll understand that compose is a great way for immutable or once use variables. In the dynamic content, I'm going to choose the text and that'll allow us to see the summary that's generated by attaching a file. So when I test this flow, because I've added in the input parameter for my manual trigger, I'm asked to attach a file. I'll add in my sample contract. I'll run the flow and we'll see that the flow creates a version of the file. It converts it to PDF. It deletes that original copy. And then if we look at the AI builder for recognizing text and have a look at the raw output, we'll see that there is a key here called full text, which will include all of the text that's been extracted via OCR. Of course, we then pass that into the create text with a GPT using a prompt. And again, if we look at the output there, we'll be able to see the text, which is the summary. But because I added a compose, we can see that summary here in full. So my demo at the beginning started with when a file was uploaded to SharePoint. And in order to achieve that, I need to delete my manual trigger and add in the trigger for SharePoint. So the trigger that I'm looking for is when a file is created and we can just go with properties only. I'll need to select the SharePoint site, which is my August 2024, the library, which is my default document library called documents. But because this is just going to give me the properties of the file, of course, I need to then create a copy of the file to be able to convert it to PDF, assuming we're only working with Word documents and images. So in here, I need to add in an action to get the file content. And that file content is going to be from the file that's just triggered this particular flow. Again, I'll assign the site address, but this time I need to add in an identifier. And this is where rather than using the ID, there is specifically a dynamic value called the identifier. With this now in place, we've got to make a couple of changes into the create file because originally this was based on the trigger for the manual. We need to go and add in a file name and a file content. If you go into the dynamic content, we can get the name of the file to include the file extension here with this dynamic value file name with extension. And then the file content, because we use that get file content action, you can see we have file content. And again, this is base64, it's not text. Everything after this remains the same. So we will be creating a version of the file on OneDrive, we'll be converting it to PDF, we'll delete that original document that we've added to OneDrive, we'll use the OCR to recognize the text, we'll pass the text into the GPT, and whilst I have this compose here just to demonstrate the text output, I can actually remove this now because it's no longer required. And what I'd like to do instead is to add in an action to update the file in the form of the properties. And again, if I specify the site address, the library name, and the ID of the file, we can then go into the advanced properties and where I've added in a column for the summary, I can add in the dynamic value from the create text in the form of this dynamic text value. So now our summary will be saved directly to our SharePoint document library as a file is uploaded. So if I put this flow into test, jump back over onto my SharePoint site, I can upload that Word document once more. Our flow will be triggered and complete within about 15 seconds. Back over onto SharePoint. If I refresh my document library, we can see that once more, a summary has been produced and it's been added to my document automatically. Now, what if the default summary is not good enough for us? Maybe we want to extract particular entities, i.e. who the seller is, who the buyer was. Maybe the summary is too long and we want to construct our own prompt. Well, that's something that we can do in the next part of this video. So back over onto Power Automate, if I open up the Create Text with GPT using a prompt, we used one of the system prompts called AI Summarize. And you'll note that there's an ability to create a new custom prompt. So if I click on that button, it'll load up the experience here that allows me to create a prompt. Now this will appear under the AI hub on the Power Automate portal, but you can do it directly from within your flow. I'm gonna call this my custom summary, and I'm going to specifically ask it to summarize the text in less than 25 words extract the buyer and the seller and format as follows. So it'll be summary with the text summary in 25 words or less, seller, Mr. Bird, and then buyer, Mrs. 
Smith. Now, in order to test this, if I jump back into Word, I'll copy all of this text here. I can go into the input. Because I haven't yet specified an input, there's nothing being passed into this prompt. So I can add in an input and we can call this the document text. In here, I can specify some sample data. And by pasting in the word data, I now have some sample, as we can see as I scroll up and down. If I hit test prompt, we can see that we now have the summary, the sample contract for the purchase of a new house. Now, whilst this isn't exactly the format I'm looking for, I can iterate and modify this prompt and test it further. But if I call out some of the other settings over on the right hand side, if we look at the output, whilst at the moment it's configured to output text, there is a feature preview that's coming, quite an exciting feature that I've explored in the pro code versions of GPT on Azure. You can output as JSON. And what that means is rather than getting plain text, I could actually describe an object with key value pairs. And rather than get this summary that we see in the prompt response as a single line of text, I could actually specify that it outputs an object in the form of three keys, the summary, the seller, and the buyer. And then I could use that structure further in my flow to save that data into a third party system or potentially break down that text into three or multiple different columns or metadata against that file. If I save that custom prompt, you'll see that it's selected it by default. In the document text, I need to go and select the dynamic value for the full text from the document based on the action above. The original parameter here is now invalid because I'm using a different prompt. So I'll need to remove this. Otherwise, when I go to save it, you'll see that we get an error message. That the text or the parameter does no longer exist. So I can hit the cross, remove that, save my flow once more. And if I jump back across onto SharePoint, I'll upload another version of this file. We can see there's currently no summary. The flow as before will quickly complete but it will use this custom prompt. And if I jump back across onto SharePoint and refresh that, you can see we now have the custom output, which includes the summary in less than 25 words and including a call out to the seller and the buyer, which is much more meaningful for my particular process rather than the system prompt that gives me this basic summary. So if I jump across onto the Power Automate Maker portal, you'll see over on the left hand side, I've got the AI hub, which if I click on, it will include prompts, but also other AI models. If I click on prompts, we then have my custom summary prompt. And as well as being able to customize directly from within Power Automate, you can do so from your AI prompts. And as a final bonus to today's video, if we jump back across onto this output setting, where we've got that JSON preview, we can select that, go into edit, and if we specify a structure for the output in the form of a summary, the seller, Mr. Bird, the buyer, Mrs. Smith, if we apply this and then close it, I can update my original prompt to summarize the text in less than 25 words, extract the buyer and the seller, and remove the additional text as follows. When I test the prompt, you can see that we now get the summary, the seller and the buyer in the format of an object, which would then in turn allow us to use this data dynamically within our flow to update three separate columns in a document library where we had the summary, the seller and the buyer, and equally maybe even send that data to a third party system, another custom connector, via email, etc. using those dynamic values.